right, great. Thanks for joining us. All right, we're going to uh, messages and into the Q&A. Blessings. Here we go. Greetings to you. It's Archangel Michael, blessings to you. Yes, there's so many opening timeline changes. The energy fields of the earth. Yeah, expect the earth changes. Nothing too dramatic, but as the earth changes, you change with it, as you know. There are also portal energies of much around your California. Much of California is going through changes, you can see, and it's going through many years of transformation. Not to say it's going to be unrecognizable, but it is going through an energy change of actually just, you know, the way it uses physical energy, like for vehicles and things of that kind. So it's going to be like the poster child of it. So that's another reason why it's going through its transformation. It's kicking out those that they don't want there. <laughs> or as it goes, because people can see the future timelines also. It's not just because it's getting more expensive. It's just, it doesn't make any sense, but it is showing what the rest of the country is going to go through, at least on an energy, uh, for physical energy, for, as I say, vehicles and things of that kind. So it is a pioneer in a lot of ways. It's just a difficult one to be a part of or living within it. We also see a lot of energy changes in Ohio. Nothing too dramatic, but there's a lot of shifts going on there at this time. Uh, what make the news is on unknown at this moment, but there's a lot of energy shifts happening there at that, at that moment. It, it, Ohio, United States, in the United States, has a, it has a lot of entry points for souls at this point. Uh, a lot of times, state, certain states, and, and at least around the, of course, around the world, certain places have just entry points where just souls just come right in very easily, unnoticed, at least by the rest of the world. <laughs> Ohio is one of them. Always at this time, it shifts from uh, country to country, state to state. So, uh, Hawaii is a major one. Uh, sometimes Norway is. Sometimes, right? Lessons. We are the Martians from Orion. Here, that's for World War II. There is many turning points that have not been mentioned, or energy points, you can say. Uh, what happened during just the Holocaust happened on other worlds. Also, it is a mirror on a mirror on this Earth. Now, yes, there's different points of view of why it occurred the way it did. Yes, there's many agendas that aren't yet. Yeah, even to understand, yeah, there's a mainstream agenda, but of course the true agenda obviously is not going to make itself too clear. But there's going to be a lot of knowledge of that, at least channel knowledge over time uh, to make that more clear. Um, different points of view, controversial, but for healing reasons, because your Earth is going through a healing process. And we slowly that era will be opened up, more knowledge will come through. There's been a blockage for many reasons, because it's not time yet, but we feel like that's opening up. Uh, there's just different, yes, once again, different points of view, why it occurred. Of course, there's other situations going on currently, yes, that are just as bad or, yes, worse. 
uh, that are not mentioned. So, yeah, history did not learn from itself. Well, or maybe it did. It's just taking advantage of a lot of it's happening in the Middle East and being kept quiet. Hopefully that will change over time. Those are our galactic wars, of course. Thanks. <clears throat> Greetings to you. We are the the fairy collective, where we are the Agartha fairy collective. Greetings to you. Energy fields, blessings to you. Yes, you can say we are technically the future human. And is one way, what are people, humans going to grow wings one day? Well, anything is possible. <laughs> Well, yes, many are already changing genetically as it, as it is. Some are taller, some are shorter, some have long faces, short faces, things of that kind. So if you want to grow wings, might as well. But you're not at the vibration where that would be accepted. But, of course, there's never a time when that's truly going to be too accepted. But uh, especially if people are, some people are born with tails. I mentioned uh, publicly, of course. Uh, but we do see flying apparatuses uh in your future humans when the time is right uh yes as more even the ears will shift also to point for some for some so it's just a new era you're going to go into slowly as it many are in the physical but they want to see these things in the physical well they might get their they might get their uh wish <laughs> so especially if you have a fairy child <laughs> literally <laughs> so that might be a little bit much or some but we do see that uh the future eventually uh, we're here to answer your questions whenever you're ready blessings to you hi blessings blessings greetings to you thank you for coming in blessings. thank you up uh, first this evening we have daria hello fairies Green. yes greetings. Mm -hmm. Mm, I don't know what to ask, so I basically just, do you have any forecast for uh, Daria? <laughs> well, we do, well, this is not a forecast, but we do see of uh, environments, worlds, uh, where you were flying in the sky and people asked for help, they just flew away. <laughs> uh, because... Um, some don't don't learn their own lessons. <laughs> we see that for some reason. We just have to share that. <laughs> uh, I don't believe they always have wings, though. Hmm. Uh, for forecasts, um, uh, and what exactly that you're looking for forecast? <laughs> mm, okay, so I was watching an interesting TikTok thing today. Uh, oddly human, but there was a time traveler that uh, wanted to point out a specific date uh, th because the ocean is basically 80% undiscovered mm -hmm. and wanted to point out that something specific will happen the 22nd of February. Mm. Uh, I mean, how many? I mean, do you have any takes on that? It was a possibility, but unlikely. I mean, it's difficult to have an exact date for anything. Uh, does the astral really want to tell you to use the astral usually doesn't want to tell its secrets? Ah, uh, because I lost my spaceship, and I wonder if that was the thing. Just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, I, just... I believe it's in the Pacific Ocean if you're looking for it. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, cool. Yeah. So, uh, no. Any other messages from your fairy, 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 fairies? Well, well you do see you as a fairy godmother. Yes. Uh, maybe sometimes not the easiest one to get along with, but that's kind of the point. Especially when you don't give, you know, you're able to give wishes, but it's like 
No, <laughs> is the answer, obviously. Uh, and you've been around, you've connected to Cinderella type people and didn't give them anything. <laughs> Sometimes you give the, the yeah, it's those, uh, what is it, the, the stepsisters, give them something uh, instead. That's for your old princess to learn something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I'm caring. Yeah. That's that's so me. That's so nice. Thank you but, for that. But yes, it is something that you uh, uh, you do. Yes, you do have the ability to turn frogs into pr princes, or the other way around, or the toad. Um, it's something that you do. <laughs> so, yeah, I might have kissed some of them myself. So. Yeah, some of them. The been, turds, or what do you call them? Some of them yeah. been more like reptilian, <laughs> just warty reptilian beings. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm got to yes. press it. Bye. Blessings. Hey, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we got Stephen. Hello, fairies. Greetings. Greetings. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you for being here. Much love to you. Yes. Thank you. Um, can you uh, uh, please uh, connect, uh, since y'all are here, with uh, my fairy connections in Agartha, uh, uh, any of my Agartha connections uh, dealing with the fairies, and uh, just know more about my history or connections uh, currently, uh, about what's going on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I do see, well, you have had a lot of connections with reptilian kings, actually an actual reptilian being as a King realize also Gartha has many layers to it. Is that just one plane? It's many different dimensions, just like yours. It can go on and on. So there's infinite versions of a Gartha connected to your world. Uh, but yes, the reptilian king. You have been a lot of times as a wizard, also. Uh, fairy energies. Yes, you do. Yeah, usually your fairies are sometimes. Well, only ones I'm seeing are really small, but I believe they had the larger ones, but they're showing the small ones. Um, yeah, it's you also have the ability to teleport, also. Um, but you're yeah you're where you're part of the realms where there were war, where there were warlike realms, where there actually reptilian beings were turning humans or the fairy people or the Agarthian people into actual reptilian creatures. Uh, they had they found spells to do that to control society, uh, and then turn it back into humans so nobody can notice it. <laughs> so uh, the, to clone it, to cloak it. <laughs> so that was uh, I believe that's still going on today. <laughs> so something so it does cause difficulty, especially on Earth like yours. So what happens in Garth can affect your reality also. Okay. Sweet, sweet, awesome! A lot of info on that. Thank you. Um, second question is uh, just I'll leave it. I'll leave it open. I'll just let anybody who wishes to connect uh, as a message. Thank you. Well, there's a top one Nordics that are assisting you at this time. Yes, they do show a giant bunny rabbit or a six foot rabbit. They get information from on a galactic ship of what they're saying. It is around the moon. Uh, there is another version of you on Mars. There's, uh, there's obviously there's different versions of Mars. Also, you are you have a reptilian side of you there at this time. Uh, as a connected to the secret space program, there's versions of it. There's also an Egyptian energy in Mars. Also, it's not I don't believe mentioned. There's a reality where it's it's has a I believe you've seen pyramids there, but there's actually Egyptian type of people there in another dimension. But it does. People can't connect to it. <laughs> well, psychically, obviously. Uh, but it's something that you're connected to. Like a, there is a, a reality of Mars where you are an Egyptian pharaoh also. Not like they have here, though. <laughs> and they have ships and things like that. So Mars is still active in a different reality, of course. Not yours. Well, not... It's at, Yeah, it's mostly not. <laughs> it is and it isn't. Blessings. <laughs> Blessings. Thank you. Wow, oh, very interesting. There's a lot there, definitely. Up next, we've got Logan. Greetings. Yes, greetings. My first question tonight is, I would like to know when beings incarnate, when just when humans incarnate, 
between the ages of three and six, um, when they start to remember their past lives, what events do they remember the most? Are they events that have high emotions associated with them or just like what events do they or can they remember? Well, it's different. Obviously, it's on a, on a different level for everybody. It depends on what they, you know, some remember king lifetimes, queen lifetimes. They remember, usually they remember the lifetime where they had the most happiness or they're controlling or it all depends. This world can trigger off so many different timelines. Uh, some kids feel like they are alien. They remember their alien lifetimes very easily. Uh, it's just a mixture. It's, yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, I don't really have much else to add to that. <laughs> All right. I see that. Thank you. My second question is, earlier today I had an image of this like beautiful artwork that I'm probably going to try and draw later, but... It was of a being, a gray or a zeta, holding a like little piece of uh, mm -hmm. dirt with like a sprout coming out of it, like a plant sprout. Mm -hmm. And I got an image of this being today. She, she, yeah, I'm guessing it's a she. It had like blue eyes, pinkish mm -hmm. skin, and it had like more of a rectangle head. I just I'd like to know what messages does this being have for me? If you can connect to that one. Well, it's showing peace. Was well, humanity there? That zeta raised count with zeta races uh that one's making just you know they're showing that there's more to what the mythology that's been said about them obviously the darker ones are remembered the most but as a collective that you're connected to uh they you say they're called the golden ones the zeta golden ones of course they're not gold uh but there's their hearts are so yeah just it's making peace it's, it's showing that you're making a lot of uh Making a lot of progress with what you're doing here. Okay. You're bringing that piece through you, basically. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Very cool. Thank you very much, yes. Paris. So, uh, excellent to uh, explore that. Though. Lessons. I will. Thank you. Well, that was a cool picture you painted there. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Up next, we have Silver Claw. Hello, friend. Yeah, it's great to see you. Hello. Um, my first question is, um, what is your perspective on the scalar device? Um, Eric's mom from Channeling Eric says it's very effective. And I was wondering if I could, you know, maybe pay my bills using this tool or if it's not that necessary for me and could go without it. Well, yeah, people, I mean, it works for some people. It does not there to work forever. I believe you can do it without it but for some they need a tool like that you can use any type of tool you can use a stick if you want <laughs> so that's just for those that don't really trust themselves that aren't really connected to themselves that need something around those lines so i mean some people are just connected to that tool they're part of their part of its creation and astral but you know you can use any you can use crystals to do exactly what that thing with it what it does so it's up to you that's so very helpful. Thank you so much for saying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I, I had a hunch, but mm -hmm. yeah, I was just asking for confirmation, I guess. Um, my second question is, uh, any inspiring messages for me for my near future? Well, I see you are very connected to the Dragon Collective. Uh, you bring fire into your day as for your future. Um, I do see snake energy is also connected to an astral, not necessarily a negative uh, direction, but it is a part of you of understanding nature. So you can say your reptile side, your reptilian side is understanding nature. Uh, you're also very connected to the amphibians. I actually believe the amphibian energy is the strongest than your uh, rep your dragon side, but the reptilian is the healing side of. So yeah, it's, you're using more of your healing techniques for yourself. And others that are around you. So, reptile has healing abilities, but it can be sometimes rough around the exterior. But the the frog, yeah, the frog being can't go wrong. So even the toad can have healing abilities, especially those psychedelic ones. <laughs> so, that's nice. Wow, that's so interesting. Thank you so much. 
uh, gave me a lot to think about. Thank you. Yeah. That's nice. There we go. Okay, thank you. Up next, we have Anana. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, greetings. Um, I would love to know, like, what was uh, going on in my astral last night? I just had a lot of wars and fighting and attacks all the time. So if Archangel Michael can answer my guides, is there any messages about that? Yes, I believe there was a lot of reptilian vibrations there of of the fear timelines or healing those timelines. You're as an angelic being, yes, they're trying to pull out your life force or to or to weaken it. Uh, so they're trying to put fear in, into humanity. Uh, so you're there to block a lot of that negativity, the best of your ability in the dream state. As people asleep, that's when the you know they can try to you know get into people's into their uh, dream world. To cause them panic when they wake up or panic throughout their day or whatever it might be so they're filled with this especially the politics energy of just filling with anxiety so they're there to heal a lot of that i believe you made a lot of progress i do see mother mary there with you also bringing peace to those so that's interesting and uh What's the messages from fairies? I would, I would love to receive messages like, as a fire from Jesus. As a fairy being, I believe you're able to change your appearance a lot, uh, shape shifting, especially in a romantic world when you're trying to get someone to pay attention to. <laughs> so there's a lot of mischief going on there. I mean, it was good hearted, but the fairy world can get very Hmm. What do you call it? Uh, challenging, or uh, it can be a contest <laughs> for who can get pick up who. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, you're uh, just, and you're very vibrant. Well, you're mostly connected to the an angelic realms at this time, but you do heal a lot of the fairy vibrations because the fairies can be <laughs> they can sometimes be more controversial than the humans. <laughs> so. They can start arguing with each other and, you know, storms start showing on the earth. It's like, where did that come from? <laughs> so, as in Job, I believe you heal a lot of that. So, you matured a lot from uh, uh, those experiences. With that. <laughs> so, that's Thank you. Thank you. Okay, very interesting. Thank you. Up next, we have Dragon. Hi, how you doing? Yes, green soon. I uh, remember used to play hide and seek with you guys as a mm -hmm. dragon, mm -hmm. and uh, used yes. to shape shift into things like rocks and stuff. And I thought that would uh, work. And it sounds very unfair, but it never mm -hmm. really tricked you guys anyway. <laughs> well, it seemed like you're yes, yeah, so, like a little dragon at that time. For what we see here, <laughs> but, yes. You always could tell, like if it w if a rock was me, you'd know. I mean, well, it was well. If the, the rock was laughing, <laughs> <laughs> or a tree was laughing, he's like, "Hmm, is it?" Um... <laughs> so that's how it worked. Okay. Yeah, that's um... usually yeah. When you're just it's like, "Wow, that rock's moving around a lot." That's kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess uh, I got I had the shape shifting down, but the rest needed improvement. Um, right. So I. Uh, I got so my first question is, uh, I know I was a bit mischievous and uh, and hopefully I didn't cause I, you know I think I sometimes caused some mischief with you guys and uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, yeah, norm. Well, yeah, sometimes you're a, a bossy, <laughs> um, but bossy, but that never really nobody was listening to either, so that didn't work out so well. So. Uh, but yeah, I see you had like arguments with the tree people too, because they were kind of you know stiff sometimes. You know they have a lot of knowledge, but they're not very exciting to be around sometimes. So you try to try to lighten them up. Sometimes joke around with them, even if they don't get any of the jokes. So, but yes, you're um, you're. I see you're around a lot of kings. Um, 
sometimes to boss them around or give them advice that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. If it didn't work, just blame somebody else, something along those lines. <laughs> so, I believe you learned over time. I think I was playful, but also wanted to be taken seriously. And yes, sometimes the two don't go well together. No, nobody took you seriously, though. <laughs> <laughs> at least at the time, no. Who is this person? Who does he think he is? Oh, yeah, we'll listen. Keep talking. <laughs> uh, do you have any other messages for me? No moment. Uh, you seem to, yes, connect to see, the weather patterns. Sometimes you know, you know you use, I see you speaking to the sky, at least on an astral level. You do have a conversation with the Earth also. Uh, you can say it's not just Mother Earth, but the Earth itself, like the Earth Collective, uh, which I don't believe is mentioned very often. Just the consciousness of the planet, the trees, nature. I mean, Mother Earth is involved, but it's more of just looking at trees and nature itself uh, and the animals as just a, a being, you know, just, you know, just having a conversation with that vibration. And that's something that that's where you can see timelines a little bit more clearly or see through all the human controversies that's going on on the planet. It helps you keep have clarity. That's what I see there. All right. Well, thank you much, love, and I apologize. I don't think I cause mischief too often, but I think no. some of my mischief was on the high level when I did. So Yeah, it's not always mentioned here, but yes. <laughs> There's so much apologies more. for the mischief and when I was being good, hopefully I was a lot of fun. Much yes. love. Okay, yeah, blessings. Thank you. Up next, we got Liz. Hello. Yes, greetings. Greetings. Oh, that's good to uh, have some uh, fairy... Uh, energy here <laughs> yes it gets quite dense here yes uh could you tell me about my soul connections right now see it's with palladian at this time and syrian i also see a bear there with nature uh the or maybe not just the, well the bear energies in general uh as you well, some of them are kind of like commanders of the planet. At least they, they have a good insight of the world. Uh, they don't, you know, you can talk to a, a, some of these animals and just like, yeah, they know exactly what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I have to uh, listen more because I have no idea what the heck is going on now. <laughs> but that's the human, the human element is so loud here, it's hard to concentrate. Yeah. If you're out in nature, away from all of this, it'd be easier, but it's hard to do that. Mm -hmm. Hard to think. Yes, just got an acknowledgement there. Yes, yes. Yeah, Even well, I have. Animals go crazy. Yes, good. Yeah, my, my dogs, they get excited every time. <laughs> so, um, is there any message for me? Any guidance? Any anything? Well, I see um, like water treatment, like healing elements of like some people have like a little waterfall or I just see water is a good way for you to relax. Uh, of course, some people just take a shower, but doesn't mean, I mean, just like like oils or it just seems like a water element for healing seems to be good at this mm -hmm. time. Uh, okay. is what we see. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, you have the belt, the, um, what do you call it, the your uh, sound tools that people use, the sound bowl. That's but the like Tibetan bowl, like the Tibetan bowl. Yes, but we feel the water, see water el elements to uh, for healing. You can look into that if you like. Okay. Uh, there is something there if we help you relax and mm -hmm. reconnect to nature. Great, very That's good. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Blessings. Blessings. Up next, we have Tristan. Hi, right, greetings and blessing fairies. Yes, greetings to you. Okay, it's nice to talk to you. I had a, a, a good fairy friend when I was very, very young. Um, 
We call her Gobbity. Do, um, does that mean anything to you? Mm, that's a shapeshifter being. It's not shown. It's not around very often. It's it usually keeps to itself. I mean, it's, it has its own collective. It connects to. Oh, okay. But okay. We we used to walk through a field, and it was always there. Okay. Yeah, that's um, that's yeah, that's yeah. They find little areas where they hang out. That's all the place they go. So. <laughs> okay. Um. Um. Could you just scan my body? I I I've been getting under the weather and just not very good and something with my left leg, right leg, and just wondering, is this like physical or is this going away or is this just part of what I'm going through? It's astral energy. It's what's happening in astral. I believe there's a lot of reptilian energies that are going on to the earth. Um, reptilian bloodline, they're trying to control reality. And when reality breaks from them, so you're part of let's just be free and a bunch of hippies and you know <laughs> drink them if you got them. <laughs> so you're feeling what well, we feel is like the like the desperation from the controllers. You feel their kind of anxiety. So they kind of say it's like an attack, you can say. So just anyway. Yes, yeah, so energy healing. It's, it'll, it'll, I believe it will leave your space eventually. Okay, okay, yeah, because it just it just feels weird, but okay. Yeah, it just uh, has to do with what's. Well, there's there's much on the way as for events that they're planning, and I, many of you here are aware. Just they don't remember for many reasons. It's for the best. So it's just affecting us in in physical. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um. Um. On that line, we were talking before about, you know, getting these attacks and you know, going through all this stuff. And and I was saying, we must we must be able to pick and choose a bit in terms of nothing nothing can be imposed on us mm -hmm. um, in our lives. But um, and and I was saying, surely we there must be some way that we can kind of keep this to a, a reasonable level of of discomfort that we want. Do you have any um, um, thoughts or suggestions on how we can manage to not say yes to too much? Because <laughs> we well, that, that, that this for rest, well, you, the discomfort has to do with how the reality is being programmed, and you bring, you you don't want to be totally dis. I mean, some of you can live in bliss right now. It's like. Almost like a sociopathic happiness, and just hey, everything's fine. Uh, but you want to work with the earth. That's why you feel the anxiety that you do. That's why you, people have the jobs that they have that they don't really want. Is to be a part of the earth collective. Yes, you can. You can actually shift your. It's not recommended, but some people can shift their vibration, go have everything they want. It's like live a blissful life, have enough money. It's like, oh wait a minute, my yeah, that's cold. <laughs> And you're not paying attention to reality. So, yeah, you're working with emotions. Where, you know, you are, people are, it's difficult, but you are where you are because the human collective needs you where you are. But to heal that is, yes, you ask for assistance to, to release a lot of this tension or just rest more or find something that brings happiness to you. Like some, it's like people eat, this is why people eat food a lot, just to, it's like I need some kind. Of course, you might feel, feel too good afterwards, but it is a an easy comfort. It just feels better. And it's like you know, it just does. It's information too. It just information. Be like, eat that whole pizza. That's too much information. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt good though. <laughs> there are realities where you can relax with that. But but yeah, it's just. So when you feel anxiety, a lot of it's just too much from the world. Just too much stuff, and just like that's where that's where the movies come from. You know, just find entertainment or something to disconnect. Yeah. So. Okay. Perfect. Sure Thank you helpful. so much. Yes. Blessings. That's very helpful. Yeah. Blessings. Yeah, that was funny. Sociopathic bliss. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I saw it as you said it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that. Up next, we got James. Oh. Yeah. 
Uh, can you tell me what the difference between like a fairy king and queen are versus a normal one and a make it connected to any right now? Uh, Norway, uh, Denmark, Norway area, probably mostly Denmark. If you have been connected to royalty there in the past, uh, I do feel Jamaica at one time there is a royalty there. I'm not sure if there's there now, but there was, um, at least the British Isles, the British. Or it used to be connected, very connected to that area. And Australia. <laughs> uh, I believe you're connected to Australia currently, <laughs> at least on an astral level. Um, uh, I'm not sure if that's, is that what you're looking for exactly? Yeah. Oh, also, like, what's the difference between a, like a queen and a normal fairy? Uh, like your current queen here, or or just or like a like if someone is a, a fairy queen, like what is that? Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, yes, it's oh, they're just well, some of them are worse than you are you have here. <laughs> uh, Paris Sultan's one of them, <laughs> so yeah, they get so strong in their minds, they just can't let go <laughs> here. They might be have a queen like person, you know, princess or god of word. Uh yeah, but in the fairy realms it can be that but ten times worse. <laughs> it all depends. Some are very calm about it, but some they just let it go through their head all the way. A lot of them are actually decent at it, but the they can't let it go. It's like a high. <laughs> so Parasolin is definitely one version of it, there's probably others. Kardashians are more like a bunch of reptilian people. And that's a little bit different. <clears throat> that's not exactly. That's not exactly a healthy energy. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, <laughs> notice how they turn pe change people's se sexual identities around. Yeah, they're known to do that. <laughs> that's not surprising. So actually, so the queens here are a lot more tame. <clears throat> Let's put it that way. So that's just... oh, oh, I got a quick one. Oh, who has uh, been whispering to you lately? Yeah, a fairy being by mm. I get the name Victoria. Little things here and there. As you you. Blessings. Okay, blessings. Up next we have Christy. Greetings. Greetings. Blessings. And so I've been thinking about um like all these uh programs that I've been in or have visions of, I don't know if they're in this lifetime that I'm seeing them or just the other realities of uh, like the 20 and back space program or um, I keep thinking of George Bush Sr. and, and me and him. Um, can you can you tune in to, to mine and his, um, what, what's our connection? Oh, with George Bush Sr. or with someone else? Yeah, with George Bush Sr. Because I see him in my vision and I'm oh. like seven and he's like, it's like, it looks like he's like 50 or something. Well, and, you know, it's not a, a good thing that he's doing with yeah. me, but I just, I just don't know if it's this reality that it happened in or if it's another reality. Like, well, there are realities where he's been a robot. But he's looked the way he does, <laughs> which is even more creepier, actually. Mm. It's like being programmed as a machine and then going to be, I mean, he's humanoid, like an android, but he looks like he does here. So he's being tested for Earth. So he was, and so oh. you were, you were aware of that. You're monitoring it. I don't believe you can infiltrate it you weren't there to stop it you couldn't do that you had to just monitor what they were planning that's what it was a reptilian reality i feel that's part of it there's more to it than that that's why but it is a reality it was a timeline before this one that's what we see so i was just monitoring like uh observing that yeah because if his energy pulls me there well no you're there uh with your you're a galactic group. Okay. Yeah, you're a modern, you're a secret space group. Mm -hmm. 
There's also realities where he's still a president. Mm -hmm. You think mm -hmm. what you have now is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. No. So yeah, he's a he's a plant basically, obviously. Oh yeah. So there's there hasn't been any healing at for him. Oh, he's kind of he's not the easy. He, oh, now yes, but so yes, yeah, some of the visions that you're getting is you working healing in that timeline, yes, mm -hmm. or healing him in the afterlife, yes. Yes, there's yeah. some that. I can see that. Mm -hmm. So, um, what have me and Hayden been doing lately in astral, or in other or other places? You know, like our Zeta aspects. To make a lot of energies are in Mars. There's a lot of secret energies there astrally. Of uh, it's like a, it's like it's away from Earth, so it's a good place for planning and just you. Know, an asteroid doesn't affect the Earth too much. <laughs> so it's like a, that's what the military is to assist what's going to happen. Yes, so even the secret space program has timelines that they're trying to bring in or assist. And so they see a timeline where where they can bring in their knowledge, their healing, whatever it might be, uh, to change things. And you see us as the Zetas doing that there? or uh, the Zeta, but also Nordic, played yeah. in Nordic beings that you I choose. Is that on the base that I was seeing? That is the dome uh, mm -hmm. military base? Yes. Mm -hmm. With the octopus head man person yes. that I was that same yeah, there's one. Of, yeah, there's a lot of that, yes. So I have a few aspects there that are different. And and there there is also an Egyptian presence there. Mm -hmm. the Some of this Anunnaki connected to. I can see that. The trees and stuff too. I just saw a vision with that with the mm -hmm. pyramid looking even well, you, even the Nile River is there. <laughs> artificially mm. made. <laughs> wow. Thank you, fairies. Yes, blessings. Okay, thank you, blessings. Up next, I have Brock's questions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll read those for him. His first question. I used to have this reoccurring dream as a kid of this blue-skinned feline girl, and I remember in the last dream I had with her, she boarded a ship and said goodbye. I woke up crying. Who is this being, and what is my connection with her? Well, I believe that was uh, another... A par it was a parallel reality, yeah, where she had to go in the deep space. She's not saying where, but it was a mission, a military mission. And you're a part of, you say you're a part of a, like a galactic military, but you had to stay where you're at. So, yeah, that's like a soulmate vibration, definitely. <laughs> but she's still connected to you, Carlos. So that's, yeah, you're still connecting telepathically. It's just, it was very difficult. I believe the mission isn't exactly the safest either, but I believe she'll be fine overall. Hey, thank you. Second question. Can you tell me about my connections with the fairies of Agartha? Yes, before we go into that, we all we see in your energy field lifetimes as a cyborg being. I know that's not what you're looking for for fairies, but we just see that cyborg energy is so strong uh, that you're healing. So there's other versions of Earth that you've been part of a cyborg reality that's similar to... Yeah, I kind of like the Nazi Germany, but it was robots <laughs> instead. But I don't think you're wiping people out or anything like that. I uh, just want to bring that out first. Uh, but the fairy realms, yes, is a wizard being. Uh, as a fairy being, yes, you've been uh, mischievous as yourself. Yes, uh, you're you're part of like a cupid energy. You're helping humans in this reality to find each other. Uh, and those that. <laughs> Or being stubborn, you kind of stick them sometimes. <laughs> so, like, why didn't you listen to that or poke people every once in a while? So, that's some of that. Uh, and that was like more of the Middle Ages time period. I don't think you do that anymore. Okay, thank you. Uh, up next, we have Elizabeth. Hi, how are you guys doing? Yes, greetings. Uh, my first question. Um, has to do with my many, many dreams of flying. I have dreams of flying through evergreen trees. I'll, and I've had dreams of flying over countries and flying to somewhere, this tropical place that doesn't feel like it's on Earth. Does that mean anything, or are these just random dreams? 
No, that's a Palladium. So some of those are parallel realities that are happening right now. And you go to those places to heal, get away from this place. So you connect your other versions of yourself to relax and astral. So you want to experience that with your other self flying, and there's other things that are going on also. So the trees are just a healing vibration to help with the flying so you can, you know, to continue to, so, you know, you're working with each other, basically. So that that's basically for your, yes, your moment of Zen, you can say. Cool. Thank you. Um, and then my second question is, um, do I have any, do I have any, I guess, um, deep connections with the angelic realms? Because I've always felt like I do, but I, I don't know, like, which ones in particular. Well, you've been a spirit guy, a very strong spirit guide uh for even those that are questionable on you know sometimes tyrants uh you've been a spirit guys like let them do their thing <laughs> it's like you know they're to teach other people and just you know they have to be this way and it's for people to learn so yeah it's you've had various lifetimes as a, a very strict spirit guy is what we see uh but it's also angelic energy to heal that vibration uh, there's a lot of angels that heal you as you're with someone that's kind of difficult. <laughs> but you sometimes take the hard jobs away. So. Not always, but sometimes it's necessary. You mean I was a, a strict spirit guide like I was a nuisance? Not a, No, you're just those. No, they were there for people that were a nuisance. Oh, <laughs> oh gotcha. Like a dictator. <laughs> okay, cool. You know, but some, th some of these things have to be done. So it's not all guys can handle it. Yeah. So, so yeah. Cool. That's Thank you. Part of it. Yes. Blessings. Hey, blessings. Up next is Marvin. Greetings. Who am I speaking with today? Yeah, we are the fairies. Uh, greetings, fairies, hugs, and cheekies, if you know what I'm talking about, and yes. fist bump. And um, for my first question, I will ask, I have three memorabilia sports cards that I'm trying to believe that I'm trying to put maybe a five-digit price. I'm trying to sell them. I'm not going to say what type of site and stuff like that. But then I have one that won the Super Bowl, and I'm trying to, Put that one on sale for uh seven thousand. I'm trying to figure out will I get my meeting price or will I'm I'm just thinking out the head that I'll probably won't have nobody come and get that type of memorabilia. One of them is the one that won the Super Bowl, and the one is a father and son that uh the son won the Super Bowl. The father, he didn't want Super Bowl, but he's a great athlete. And I'm trying to figure out if I could put them on uh, for sale on eBay when I give them a meeting price. Well, you just got to make sure that nobody is there to scam those things from you because there's a lot of scammers out there. They'll just they'll take it off your hands, pay you, and then they'll, you know, you got to be careful of that. So I believe you will sell to to a certain, to somebody, yes. Just being uh, when careful. you say uh, get like scammed off your hand, a scammer, like how are you talking about? Like if I go for a lower price? No, it doesn't matter. Sometimes I can go for a higher price. So just be careful of who you're selling to. Uh, some some of us going to try and get it from you and not pay anything. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Someone should get. Oh, damn. Uh, you do your uh, research on it. <laughs> do more research on eBay. Yeah, how to sell these type of things, yes. I believe you will if we get buyers, so yes. Okay. Just be aware of what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> okay, thank you. And for my second question, um, for the last couple of days I haven't been getting to sleep. Uh, I've been tossing and turning. I just want to know uh, who have been in contact with and how am I related to with this person and what's been the message and stuff because lately I I don't know I know this is a download this beginning but you know when third dimension you're not going to get like 
or to decipher a message and stuff, but I'm knowing I've been getting downloads. I've been people for the last week. There's been certain things that's been happening. I just want to know how I'm related to to it. How do I know it? And what's the message? If you sign like it up, and it's some of your relatives. Uh, actually, some of your ancestor energies that you're healing at this time is what we see. So those that some of them have been actually the slave energies, and your your ancestor line, I believe you're healing that timeline. Uh, it's been very difficult. It, has it sucks. been? Has Somebody it been sucks. that? Is is it that? Is it that ancestry land? Yeah, it's always so. Yes. Okay. Okay. This this is along with this question. If mm -hmm. I let myself be known, let me let him. I mean, let the world be known. About I'm his eighth ancestry grandson. Will I get disputed towards family members or other people, or will I be harmed? Will I be like get a target on my back for me letting myself know that I'm his, his grandson and that we're not all bad and stuff like that? I'm just want to know because I want to let myself know that I'm his grandson. And mm -hmm. that the truth about how he really got his knowledge, I want to put that out there, but I just don't want to get a target put on my back, and I don't want to get assassinated. No, so I feel like you won't get assassinated. Just get some heat from the family, from what I can see. <laughs> so is is it something that, that I need to go along with and let uh, the world know? No, the world know how does this work exactly? Like on the internet, or how's that work? I mean, I mean. How he got his knowledge of how he, how they when they captured him and how they got how he was able to read. Do I need to put that knowledge out there, and will I get crucified for that if I put that out there? Of how it might have been disseminated or downloaded to him. Oh well, yeah, you can put it out there. I don't think you're gonna get crucified or anything. You might get a little bit of backlash, possibly or nothing at all. So I wouldn't worry about it. Well, I'm not trying to do it for profit, not not for that and stuff, mm -hmm. but for real billion, yeah, for profit. But mm -hmm. for that, I'm just trying to put it for knowledge. For the, I just want to get no backlash from family members, because I know that they say that they have found his skull from a church that was, I guess they gave it to the family about two years ago when all this stuff started. Mm -hmm. stuff. I don't know if this is a connection or not, but they said they found the skull. It was given to one of the female elder members of the family, and but I just want to let them know, and the us of the members know though it was something that it might have been extraterrestrial that might have happened there. And I'm trying, I don't want to get no backlash and towards like uh, uh he's a uh, he's a fraud and stuff like that. Will it be something that I can open the door to the world? Well, I mean it's. You don't have to put yourself out to the world, but it would be good to bring some of this up to some of your family members, at least. Those that feel they're open-minded to it. So. Well, do I need to put it on YouTube? So, I'm sorry. I don't really have to take up all the time and stuff, but will YouTube be a good uh, vessel to put f fun and stuff? I mean, yeah. like, the, the, the flood itself through. If you want, yes. It's hard to get noticed on that platform, so... It shouldn't cause any difficulty. So, All right. thank you, blessings, hugs, and cheekies. Thank you, Ferris. Okay, thank you. Up last this evening is me. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings. Thank you again for coming in. Um, my first question: I was listening to a physicist explain uh, how light interacts with space and time. Mm -hmm. He said when traveling at the speed of light, time slows down and space contracts to where time and distance is irrelevant to light, uh, like where light can be anywhere at any time almost instantly. And I started to think how through technology I can interact with others, whether in real time live broadcasts around the planet or recorded film of people in the past. I'd like to know, is my vibration kind of metaphysically projecting light through space and time in a sense time traveling? Oh uh, yes, it is happening right now, actually. Yeah, you're always gathering. That's another reason why you might feel a little bit dense. We see your energy around the planet, actually. Uh, some of it's around Mars. You're looking for... You go where there's knowledge for the Earth. So part of your energy also goes to 
the deepest ends of the universe also. A lot of those beings are here too. So, yes, you do work with the Earth's vibration in that way. Now, when I'm projecting this light into time, you know, into the past, does this have like a butterfly effect, a butterfly effect with timelines? Yes. Yes, the timelines of the past are being healed currently. Meaning history might say there's a war, such and such, and that's true, but a lot of beings go to that time and heal that vibration so they can unlock you from, you know, the mentality here. So the past is not always being healed, but a lot of times it is. Not everything, but yes. Interesting. I mean, outside of the medium of technology like that, is there a way that I could connect directly with these times and spaces? Well, like with the past, for example? Right, right, past or the future? Or... Uh, well, yeah, you can connect to a past, like, a, usually where there's conflict, like a war that you might be interested in, like time of Napoleon or Genghis Kong, and feel the vibrations of that time line. timeline. You're, like, tapping into that reality, but it's, like, in real time, and you're healing that vibration that is affected in this reality. Yeah, it was like because uh, there was a moment where I re- was like reading the Bible, you know, back when I first had like my awakening moment, and I I started you know empathizing with the characters, and then like I was able to emotionally understand the decisions they were making as if I was in the story with them, and then I saw myself in the room with these people, and I, I is that kind of like how I'd be connecting with these spaces yes. and times where I'd be yes. you know experiencing it? Yes. Now here's a way of how belief systems can work. So you have Jesus during his time, you know, he lives, he goes and lives in France and he goes to all these places, doesn't get crucified. But then when someone creates a mythology of him being crucified, people put it on their belief systems. Now there's a timeline of that. Now people are experiencing that timeline. So it gets them to move that timeline where that did happen. So <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> that's how the magicians work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit complicated, but. Yeah, so they put a belief system like currently, like the news does currently now. So the past is totally different, and the modern wizards change things, move, move people's uh, idea systems around. Right. And it makes it pretty something light to the past, mm-hmm. you know, that can do a healing mm-hmm. that would change, you know, the course of events. And... Yes. Yeah, because yeah. everything happens now. So you just, have... I mean, those are happening in some timelines, but it doesn't have to affect this timeline. All right, yeah, all right, I see. Yeah, because I was worried about my world and reality just changing. Oh, it can only, go, but it can only get better. <laughs> okay, all right, right, right. All right, very cool. I appreciate hey, that confirmation. Areas of the Holocaust, things like that, you heal those vibrations. Because um, let's say like the Holocaust, you heal that energy. So people here will become, as more people heal that time frame, of course people are hearing it now. As you heal it more, more people in this modern time or the future time, we'll look at that time, be able to let it go, move forward, and you know, and just be able to face it on a on a different level. You know, set the the table to make it easier for them to release. Mm-hmm. And also, there's current Holocaust happening around the world, also, and eventually those will be healed too. Sometimes you have to heal the past before you heal the present. Right. Right. So. right very cool. Thank you for that. Um, my second question. Uh, I wrote it down. All right. Last week, I learned about a feline friend that accompanies me in astral. Can this being share a little bit more about the nature of our relationship and my connection with currently with the feline collective? Well, sometimes you don't always get along with them. Uh, a lot of the felines, like on your planet, merged with the reptilian. Yes, the eyes are similar. They have similar characteristics as the reptilian, similar like the human, merged with other beings also. Mm-hmm. Uh, for their own growth. So it's like instead of making war with each other, we'll just come together, which that, that in itself can cause a lot of difficulties. Uh, but so the, the, you're, what you've been connected to with the felines, a lot of them are headstrong, just like they are here. <laughs> like right. Transitions. So that's what adds more frustration to you. It's like, geez, you're on another planet. They're, they're just like they are over there and here. <laughs> so... <laughs> Obviously, there's ones that are easygoing, but some that are just getting that royalty energy. They feel they just they get an ego about themselves. So, but there is a positive side. I believe, yeah, you're finding a balance with your your feline self, as I see. 
Mm-hmm. So, yes, you were part of a lot of the politics in the past. Let's put it that way. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're common. As you calm that down, you'll feel your, you know, what you feel here calming down also. All right. All right. Yeah, they like to keep it cryptic. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you yes. again. Uh, blessings uh, and thank you for yes. your assistance this evening. Oh, yes. Another thing uh, was the fairies. Yes, they like to, uh, some of them, uh, like when you pull a tail of a dragon, you got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so some are like, oh, like, okay, let's get, let's see if we can do this. And, uh, you know, sometimes the dragon will ignore it, <laughs> but then it'll just get super pissed off and you got to run like you want. <laughs> 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 so that's some that's something that fairies like to do. Just for uh see if they can get get a rise out of <laughs> So all right. That's nice. Great. So, okay. All right. Thanks.